What's up, guys? We're going to try to get to 2075. Before I start, I just want to say a couple of words because a few people have messaged, commented some things about my suspicions when I play people. So sometimes I'll say things like, well, that was a little bit weird. I'm a little bit suspicious. I don't really know. You know, stuff like that. Um, I just want to say a couple of things just to get it all out there. So number one, whether you like it or not, cheating is pretty common. It's actually a common thing. So that's the first thing. Like I actually get messages from chess.com pretty frequently when I, when I play regularly. Oh, you've been refunded, you know, so many points because so-and-so was cheating or whatever. Like it, that's a common message that I get. So that's the first thing. It, it happens, right? Shouldn't, but it does. And that's just part of life. The second thing, um, I have probably played tens of thousands of chess games online in my life across different platforms, chess.com, Lee Chess, ICC, you know, other places. So I I kind of have a feeling like of, of like, okay, what does it feel like to play against a 2000 rated player? What does it feel like to play against a 2200 rated player? And don't get me wrong, they're good players. Sometimes they have really good games. Um, but I kind of know what it feels like. And I also kind of know like, this is just as weird. This just, I don't know. I've never played against a 2200 rated player who plays quite like this, right? It's It's hard to explain but you kind of get a feeling, and if you haven't played tens of thousands of games, you wouldn't really know what I'm talking about. So sometimes I use that feeling, okay? Now, does that mean I'm right? No, I could be totally wrong, right? I could be totally wrong. It's just an opinion that I have, and sometimes I'll say things. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Like, I'm not trying to, you know, make anybody look bad or or say things that I don't know. I mean, if you're if you want me to have proof before I say anything like that, I'm never going to have proof. I'm ne- I'm never going to have proof. How am I going to have proof? I don't have a camera in, you know, recording every single person that I'm playing to see, are they using Stockfish? Did he just put that engine on? What's he doing? What's he doing? Is he getting the rice cooker? You know, like, I don't know. My guess is as good as yours. So anyway, I just wanted to like say some of that stuff. And by the way, if people think I'm cheating because of the way that I commentate and play, that would be totally legitimate. Like I would, I would say, yeah, I kind of seem like I might be cheating. Like the way that I, that I, you know, take my time talking and playing. So that's totally fair. Right. So anyway, I just wanted to say that. I don't know why. I just felt like I needed to say some stuff there. <laughs> All right, let's go. I'd love to hear y'all's opinion and feel free to tell me, Nelson, you're wrong or you're right or I agree, I disagree. Um, just my opinion. That's all it is, really. And like I said, I could be wrong, but let's play the King's Indian again. Dun, 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 dun. Let's go here. Let's go here. going on guys how's everybody doing e4 let's go ahead and castle let's see what's white going to do should d3 okay uh hmm that's a little bit of a weird square because usually i think it goes here but you, you can do that i don't remember what the significance is i'm trying to think i mean obviously it blocks the queen so you want to just be paying attention to stuff like this yeah, I'm trying to think what's the significance of that move. Well, I might still play here. Try to attack this and play e5. We could also go for our knight a6 plan as well, but let's, let's play knight c6 this time. I don't know. just seems like it makes more sense because we do have more pressure here, right? He's going to defend. So we can move this and attack. And I'm actually wondering if that's what I'm supposed to do. Because... How does white defend? I mean, yeah, you can do something like this. I can't remember. I feel like I feel like there's a maybe it's e5 and maybe I jump the knight in. Is that what I so, somehow I feel like there's a way to play against this? Anyway, I can't remember. So let's just go ahead. Let's just make a move here because I can't remember. My leg's feeling, feeling good. Thanks for asking. First time watching live. Hey, welcome. Glad you could make it. I was going to stream a little bit earlier, but uh, our power was out for a bit, so... 
I couldn't, obviously, for obvious reasons. Weird opening. Yeah, it's a, it is a little bit interesting. Um, it's not the normal, usually the bishop's here and the knight's here, but see what happens. Opponent is taking their time, probably trying to decide how they want to proceed here. Okay, and they do that. So, yeah, so normally I would go here. And I think I still might do that, but I am thinking about going here because sometimes this could actually be a, a very annoying thing to do because it just opens up the diagonal. E even if you lose the pawn, sometimes that, that's an idea. So definitely have these two options in mind. It also opens up the e-file so we can put more pressure this way. So there's there's like a bunch of things that I like about it. I don't like that I'm still going to be pinned here, which this kind of solves that problem. Then I can immediately start my attack on the king side. Yeah, we'll just we'll just go with this. This has been working pretty well for us. So let's maybe just keep up with that for another game and see what happens. I'm anticipating castling, and now I think we we do the thing, you know, we attack over here. So let's go ahead and get started. I think I will play h6. And question is, do I want to play g5 next and jump the knight over, or do I just want to jump the knight over right away? Probably will play g5, and then attack it, and then get ready to play f5. Same kind of story. Ah, he goes back to e3 instead. Okay. So a lot of times what I like to do here is attack it and try to trade off that bishop. Now he's probably just going to move. But then I could still play f5, and even if my knight gets chased away, I can jump back, and I'm still pretty happy with that. Of course, here is another option as well. But let's let's try to do that. I'm expecting bishop d2. And then I think we'll play f5. Sometimes we're going to tuck the king over here to help defend and also make way for potentially the rook coming over. So that's a, a move I'm going to keep in mind, but probably just going to start with f5. How are you, by the way, love from India? Hey, thank you. I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. I appreciate that. All right, he does go back. Let's go ahead and play f5, like we kind of talked about. And so we've seen this before, right? We we throw these pawns forward. We try to launch an attack on the king and see what happens. Now, it's interesting. White hasn't really tried to expand on the queen side. So it looks like rather than sort of counterattacking here, they're going to be focusing more on defending. So this should be an interesting uh, an interesting game, I think. Hey, Harry. Good to see you. Okay, so he does chase the knight away, and I don't think it really makes sense to sacrifice. That seems a bit ambitious. If I could follow up with the queen, maybe I'd consider it, but no, we're going to go back. And immediately plays f4. Interesting. And this is actually a good way a lot of times to defend moving the f-pawn, because it opens up these squares so you can use your rook and your queen and you can sort of defend laterally with these pieces. And so I think this is a good, probably a pretty good idea from white. Now we have to see if there's any, uh, are there any tactics or anything? This is defended well enough. This is defended well enough. I could trade and play g5. It's going to get pretty wild here, isn't it? It's going to get real wild. Um, if I take and push and push, then I can get the pawns going there, and this might become a target. Could also trade some stuff here if we want. Um, I could leave it and just play like a move like King H7, allow White to capture into me if they want. Could also think about a move like C6. Now, why would I play a move like C6? Well, I'm looking at this diagonal. 
and I'm looking at ways of bringing my knight in and taking advantage of that. So that's kind of an interesting idea as well. And this is why this is why the King's Indian is a is a difficult open or can be a difficult opening to play because you have so many moves to consider here. One, two, three, four, five, uh, sorry, five, six. I mean, there's probably even ones that I'm not considering, right? So I do like the idea of C6, just ha having this available to me. Not that I see anything immediately. Hey, Shane, thank you. Thanks for the five memberships. I appreciate you. All right. Um, yeah, so I have to make a decision. Am I going to go with this? I'm going to trade. The knight could jump around. We could play F4. I don't know. That looks, I mean, it kind of looks nice to open this up, but I really think I might want this, this as well. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about that. Then I have these two pawns ready to go. Okay, let's do it. Let's play c6. And I'm just trying to think like, okay, what did my opponent weaken in the last couple of moves? Well, they moved this pawn up. So, you know, here we go. You're 1700 and you were 1400. All right, nice. Awesome, Arpit. No, I'm not. I'm not playing uh, viewers right now. I'm just doing the the rating climb. But uh, that's awesome that you're improving. Hey, that's cool. All right. So here we go. Here we go. This is actually a serious threat that that White has to be careful of because if I'm able to play knight to g4 next and White's not prepared, this is this could be very dangerous. Right. Notice the weaknesses. Um, so I think that's probably what White is thinking about now. And I mean, I'm also threatening to immediately go here. Now, I don't really care about that pawn that much, but it's more the king that I'm thinking about here. And of course, they have options to capture, so they're probably thinking through some of this stuff. So you get these very complicated middle game positions, usually. Also, because a lot of the pieces have not been traded off, it just makes things even more complicated. Okay, he's proactively dealing with that. So that's a, probably a smart move, I would say. And I'm still thinking about going there. The problem now is h3. Yeah, this is not as good of an idea anymore. So I may consider something like king h7. I may consider taking here. Hey, Arpit, welcome to Stalematers. Why am I going to take here? Well, because I want to unleash this bishop. And I could even move here, baiting h3, and then just go back and just say, hey, I weakened the squares even more. I mean, that's, that's an idea. It's not a crazy idea, actually. Um, I don't know what to do. I mean, king h7 is, is risky because you line up here, but it does add some defenders. Very, very interesting position. I really don't know. I also want to just do this and push these pawns forward. That looks pretty good, too. All right, let's try it. We'll do this. I got to make a decision, so I'm going to have to make a move. Um, sometimes you don't know what to do. This is one of those situations. I don't see anything that's like, oh, this is a winning line. Let me play it. So I'm going to make a move before I get too low on time. Sometimes you have to force yourself to do that. I at least see uh, some sort of a plan of G5 and F4, which is, is something. Two thirty-nine wins, seven losses, <laughs> instantly subscribed. Hey, thanks. It wasn't exactly a a fair fight for all of those games because I started at two hundred rating, but uh, yeah, thanks anyway. I think somebody else joined. Let me do this. I think the kids are home. I'm hearing some crying. Uh, okay, g5 is what I was planning on doing. The knight can come in here, but I'm going to take it, and that's going to be a weak pawn. The knight can go over here, but I don't really care. I don't think. I'm probably just going to keep pushing forward. Or I could trade and then push forward, which looks decent, I think. Got to keep an eye on the time, too, because this could be a game where the time gets away from me. Uh, 
but after the next couple of moves, uh, the things might kind of calm down a little bit to where we can actually calculate some things. He's going to go for that. Interesting. Okay. So I'm, I wanted to play f4. Uh, I'm okay actually losing the bishop here. I could also just trade, but then the queen comes into a very aggressive square, which I don't really love. Yeah, let's go ahead and play f4. And this is a nice square. I'd lo I would really love to get my knight on this square. So yeah, we're looking at this. Uh, hold on, I have to talk to a girl. Okay, okay, okay. Somebody lost a sticker. That's not good when you lose a sticker. All right, uh, we got to take this. That's an obvious move. Hey, thanks, Camille. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I uh, hope I am. He plays queen here. Okay. So, yeah, this is a very nice looking square. I really think I want to go here and here. Could also play bishop g4 with a tempo. That's a nice little developing move. Maybe I'll just go ahead while I can and do that. Let's do it. Yeah, let's get the bishop out there, and then we'll follow up by bringing in the knight. So here we go. Yep, we're going to jump in here. And this bishop doesn't look very good if I get my knight in here. I mean, it almost makes sense for white to just sacrifice the pawn, really, to unleash the bishop and make use of the square for the knight. Okay, they're not going to do it. That's a weakness there. So look at this. This is an idea. Probably will come back to that later. Do I even have to save that bishop, or can I just go forward? Let's do it. We're going to play very aggressively here. And the idea is that we're going to jump in with the knight. And we're going to follow up with something like this. But also, I'm actually just threatening the bishop now that I'm, I'm looking at it. So even, even that would get my piece back right away. So there's a lot going on here. But I'm starting to think the king is weak, especially because of this square, right? Look at this. Yeah, look at that. Hard to stop. Also, I want to get my queen in, so I'm thinking about this. Goes bishop e2. Okay, so we could just take it. We could leave it and still do this plan. Hmm. Ah, we could play f3 too. Takes, 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 and then the bishop comes in this way. Oof. See, again, again, so many moves, not enough time to analyze them all. So many moves, not enough time. Ah, uh, boy, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. All right, we're going to play f3 because I got to make a move again. He's going to not take it? What? But now I can do this, right? What's happening here? I'll just take it, I think. He's got to move the rook. That's a huge threat. Or take this, but that's no good. Oh, maybe he wants to sack. Is that what he's trying to do? Ah, uh, but I have knight here. Okay, so... Take with the queen. We come in. Okay.
So as long as we don't blunder, we should be in good shape. Okay. Let's push this forward. Right, right, right. The knight wants to fork me, so let's go up here. No, oh, we could just take this if that happens. Okay. Let's go ahead and simplify. I just want to simplify this down. No reason to leave so many pieces on the board. I'm way ahead, so I can afford to give up that just to uh, save some time, essentially. Basically just trying to pre-move safe moves here. Pre-move safe moves is what I'm doing. Good game to our opponent and Let's see how would we do. Results. Okay, pretty well played game from both of us. All right, let's take a look here at the eval bar. Um, oh, I didn't ever read the comment. Let's see, what did you say? It would be cool to see how people uh, handled the Stafford Gambit at this level. Or the England Gambit. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's a good idea. I don't usually play those, but um, give it a shot. We have the opportunity. So here we go. Was it 94? I bet it was 94. Yep, 94. See, I, I thought it was, but I, I just didn't remember. Rook E8, and this is just good for black. Wow. Wow. Can you guys find the move for black? Can you find the move for black in this position? What's the move for black here? Yeah, it's knight takes e4, which is crazy, because you're giving up your queen. Look at this. You're giving up your queen because you have the follow-up check. And let's just say the king moves. You take, and this is a good position for black. I mean, you can see how tricky this, this is, right? There's all kinds of stuff here. But... That's what I was talking about way back when, when I said knight to d4, and it was the right move. I just didn't remember, so I decided to not play it. So, a little bit of an inaccuracy there. Okay, then we continue on doing the normal stuff. c6 was a pretty good move. Okay, pretty good move. Okay, so I got a little lucky there that I didn't know for sure, but it turned out that those were good moves. All right, awesome. Yeah, those are all top engine moves, which was a little bit of luck on my part. Bishop g4, knight g6, all pretty good stuff. Knight g6, yep. Knight e5, cool. So instead of worrying about the threat, creating a, a counter threat. And by the way, if, if they took, I was going to take this way. And my plan after the queen moves, I don't know, somewhere, was going to be to go queen here. Yeah, and Stockfish is agreeing with me. This is super powerful. How does... Yeah, white doesn't have a lot of options. They have to, like, sacrifice a rook to be able to stop that, it looks like. So, 
takes, takes, check, and now the king can actually get away. Game goes on. Still a very good position for me. Okay, but see that f3 was not the move. Best move was to capture. And then what was gonna, the follow-up going to be? Now just queen e8. Hmm. By the way, this is a really good idea to keep in the back of your mind. When you're trying to attack on the king side especially, if your queen is, you know, can't get over there on the normal diagonal, a lot of the times a simple thing to do is just slide it over one square. And then all of a sudden it opens up new opportunities for the queen. Okay, so I've said that before from white's perspective, but we see it even here as, as black. Same idea. So keep that one in the back of your mind. Update the wins. Okay, let me do that. 240? 240? Why not knight takes c4? So yeah, the, the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, let me make sure there's not a tactical reason. Ooh. Whoa. So there, there is a tactical reason. But I, what I was going to say is... A lot of the times, you have to like identify the part of the board that's most important. So, like right now, there's a lot happening here, and sometimes if you get distracted by grabbing pawns on the other side of the board, you sort of lose track of the game and and it falls apart. Even though you're getting a pawn, which is a lot of times is good, you have to understand is it really worth it? Okay. So, for example, if we take this white, according to Stockfish, and I don't know that I would have found this, they're going to sacrifice the bishop. And then the knight's going to come in, and all of a sudden, look at what's happening. That's a massive fork that we don't, I mean, we can't really deal with that. It's a, it's a triple fork, and we can't really deal with it. And it sort of happened because of one simple move of capturing a pawn on the other side of the board, right? So that's a good question, because I think a lot of people are, would be tempted to play that. Oh, it's a free pawn, let me take it, right? But you, you lose sight of the fact that, no, no, there's a lot happening here. We've got to be really careful there's all sorts of, of threats that white has now, and it, it's, you're going to be lucky if you don't get checkmated or, or lose a queen or something, okay? Whereas you compare that to queen e8, if white, I mean, if, yeah, if white were to try to do the same thing, let's see, why is it so different now? Because we have knight takes e4, and I don't know, the knight, I guess, is doing something here, which is still kind of interesting. If they go here, you have the queen sacrifice. Very subtle thing, but just moving the queen changes everything about that right and so you think oh it's just a pawn i have time to do that no like that one move is, is all that you needed and everything now tactically works out in your favor um after something like this i guess yeah pretty complicated position so we played f3 it wasn't the best move but our opponent blundered there if they would have taken it this is what i was planning on doing capturing here and then capturing here and then after rook g1 i didn't know what was happening because I felt like, okay, white's king is kind of weak, but so is mine. And I have to be really careful now because the rook is involved. And yeah, I don't I don't know what I was going to play. Yeah, maybe queen e8, but then I don't know what's happening. Is it f4? Or would it, no, bishop takes g5. Ooh, this is wild. This is wild stuff. Look at this. And there's going to be checkmate almost. I think I'd go here, right? Nope. That lose, oh, that loses to this one. Yeah, so I would have had to play king f7. Yeah, it was going to be real wild. All right, let me play another game. Um, oh, Stafford Gambit. Okay, so it's been such a long time. Stafford Gambit. Let me do. Let me do like a super quick review. Maybe we'll try it. This is risky though. This is risky if I do this. Somebody help me. What is a Stafford Gambit? Let's see. Is it? Um, dun, dun 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 dun. What is the Stafford Gambit? Why can't I remember the Stafford Gambit? No, 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 no. It's, uh, hold on, hold on. Is it, it comes out of, wait a second. Is it this one? There we go. It totally left my brain. Okay. This is the Stafford Gambit. Yeah, we could try this. I just, I don't really know. I think you just like try to attack, right? You do stuff like this and this and you try to checkmate the king. Is that the idea? Yeah, we'll, we'll try it. Worth the shot, I guess. But it might not end well. Just throwing that out there. Throwing that out there. Okay. Hey, we might get a chance. All right. Oh, nope. No Stafford Gambit here. <laughs> um.
Yeah, I mean, d5 is the best move. There's a there's a crazy line, queen h4. It's not really good, but you can still play it. You go here, and then you go back to here, and it's a little tricky. Now, we're going to just play the, the good stuff. We're going to play d5. Knight f3. Um... Let's take this way. And let's go knight f6. And probably just grab the pawn. Probably defend, I think. Yep, let's do that. Okay, okay, 94. Why do I get the vibe that our opponent has studied this? Uh, so we have to be careful. You have to be careful when you're playing something that they've studied. Looks like they want to go knight to g5. So maybe bishop e7 is a good move. Maybe bishop e7 is the move here. Because now we stop that idea. Yeah. We also actually have a threat of going here, too. Pamela, hey. Welcome to Stalematers. Um, okay. I think we want a castle because we want the king to be safe. But I also could play knight c6 and maybe even think about castling the other way. So let's actually do that. I don't think I'm in a rush to castle this particular moment. There's no, you know... Nothing's happening here. I have that well defended. So let's go ahead and take a moment to play knight c6. See what white's going to do. And then we'll think if we which way we actually want to castle. Let's think about that. Oops, sorry. I keep doing that. I have to... I need to get rid of that. I have a. I have this like super long line of text on my notepad here that keeps making the, uh, the winds go away when I click on it. This is called the shallop defense. King's Gambit accepted shallop defense? Where did that start? Blackburn attack? Modern defense? So many names. Okay, he plays c3. Uh, so he wants to play d4. Okay. Yeah, so let's say d4 happens. Oh, I don't know what white's going to do. Where would my king be safe? I feel like my king's actually pretty safe over here. Honestly, so I, I think I might just go ahead and do that. Now, this is not out of the question. Yeah, it's not out of the question. Hmm. No, we're going to just castle this way. I think this is a good choice. And 367, 36. So we're up the pawn, which we are holding on to at the moment. But even if we lose that, uh, we would be okay. But if this happens, then I can jump the knight in, which is actually pretty annoying he goes back okay i kind of want to play king h8 just to get off of the get out of the tactics i think i will i think i will do that if this is like a prophylactic move kind of planning ahead you just don't want something to, to pop up later that you don't expect and since it's a calm moment in the game i have time to do that okay queen e2 I feel like I need to play queen d7 and get the rook over here. That's what I feel like needs to happen. Let's do that. Queen d7. I'm watching out for this fork, but I have it covered. This bishop's doing a great job of controlling those knights at the moment. I want to bring this rook over. Yeah, let's go ahead. And now we're starting to think about things like this. Okay, so he does jump in. Um, if I take the knight takes, kind of opens everything up. I don't know that I necessarily want to do that. I think it might go bishop f5. And what that does is defends over here in case white's planning something like this. But it also puts pressure here and here, which might be tricky for white to deal with. So yeah, let's do that. Let's go ahead, bishop f5. Defending, attacking at the same time. It is a tricky position, though. I do have to be careful. I do have to be careful, but we could even just chase the queen away if we wanted. Yeah, I think that would be a good move. Okay, he takes that. 
Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If I take the knight, am I not just winning the, the piece? What's going on here? If the knight takes, I take the queen. Easy. If the bishop takes, I take the knight. So unless there's a tactic that I am unaware of, we just want a piece. Yep. Now you see. You can see why I put the rook there, and you can see how those pieces just open up quickly, and all of a sudden, white uh, misses the tactic. I think we got a new member. I need to update that. 592, I think. What's the end goal of the climb? Probably 2200. Seems like we can get there. They're blaming me for cooking rice. Yeah, it's quite possible. Okay, so he takes, and we're going to take this. Um, we could take either way, really, because this is defended. So that would be attacking the queen, but I think I'm going to just take with the bishop. And the reason I say that is because I like the uh, two rooks sort of just out of the way. They can't be captured or fall for tactics back here. Yeah, we'll take this way. Hey, welcome to Stalematers. Eternity. The Eternity? Or TH Eternity 007. Something like that. Okay. So we have to be careful, but it's defended enough. But not if something like this were to draw my queen away. So I do want to be careful here. But. One thing that you can do, whenever you have a piece like this, if you can support it with a pawn, then it just becomes this like annoying thing that your opponent can't really deal with, and I think that's what I'm going to do. F5, and here we go. Notice how it's these two pieces are essentially shutting down all of what white is trying to do, even if you remove all this other stuff. right? The pawn and the bishop are just blocking everything. But it's important that white has no pawns that can chase this bishop away. Otherwise, it doesn't accomplish the same thing. But the fact that this is already advanced and this one is gone, it's much more uh, powerful that way. Okay, he's attacking this. I have to keep an eye for tactics here. This is pinned. This is a threat. I don't know that I'm super concerned with that, but I... Maybe I want to stop that. Trying to look for ways to simplify. Now that we're up a piece, any kind of trading is, is going to be really nice for me. We can go here. Uh, seems a bit defensive, though. I'm trying to find a more active move. Trying to find a more active move. What if I go here? And the point is, I'm going to try to come over here. So queen d6. But are there any tactics? Let's just check carefully. Rook takes. Takes. Then I lose the knight. That's, that's sort of a tactic, but it also kind of trades. And I, I think I would be okay with that. Yeah, I think, I think I'm going to do that. So queen d6. Here we go. We're going to come over this way. And this is a pretty serious threat that white has to watch out for. I am opening myself up to this tactic where it takes, takes, and takes. I'm going to lose two pieces for a rook. But because I'm already up a piece, that trade is actually more okay for me. And I'm okay doing that because it simplifies the game. And we would go into a position where uh, I'm up the exchange still. So that's, that's going to be pretty good, I think. But if it was like an even position, I would not probably allow that. That makes sense. Yeah, and he's going to go for it. Okay, so we're going to take. And we're just going to get a huge trade here. 
uh, probably, because the rooks look like they're about to get traded as well. But at the end of everything, I'm going to have the rook and the knight against the two bishops. And so um, because it simplifies the game and it was kind of a tricky position to figure out a move to play, I think this is okay. Now, engine probably isn't going to like that. But from a practical standpoint, I think that that was fine. And actually, we might even be able to just get our piece back right away with this move. The only thing I'm wondering is what happens after... No, I have knight to d8. I have knight to d8. Okay. I was going to say he could take, and then if I take this one, there's a like a back rank problem. Because I can't block. But I could block with the knight. So I would be okay. Because I have everything defended. You've got to be careful with the, the back rank, though. You do have to watch out for that. He's going to go for it. So I think he missed this move, maybe. Um, let's just verify one more time. Yeah, we have 9 to d8, and we're in good shape. So here we go. And um, that should do it. Now we're up a rook. Crucial defensive move, though, right? I could very easily have lost the game. So here we go. Okay. I am going to get a puzzle for you guys to work on while I take a quick break. So let's see. What do I have? Do you want bishop against rook? Bishop against knight? Um, queen against something? What, what do you guys want? Tell me something. This should be seven. All right, so he's trying to get tricky. He wants me to take it because then he's going to take here. I might do it anyway and just start pushing the pawn. He's going to go king f1. Jack, he's going to go there. That sort of simplifies. Or... Or do I have a different way to do it? Hey, Steven, welcome to Grandmasters in Training. All right. Thank you. I mean, maybe the easiest thing is just go here, right? I don't need to take that. I don't have to. Everything's defended. I'm good. All right. Did anybody say what they want? Queen and Rook against two bishops and two knights puzzle? Um, Rook against knight. Okay, he's trying to hold on. I'm going to go ahead and push this pawn. And now I'm threatening to take this because I have checkmate down here. So. And there's the resignation. Okay. Good game to our opponent. Um, let's check very quickly. Mm-hmm. 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 88, 77. All right, not too bad. Let's take a look. Let me turn on the eval bar so you guys can follow that. All right, here we go. So we, King's Gambit. Hey, welcome to Stalematers. Thank you. Let me update this. 595. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. So he plays Knight F3, which is not one of the moves that I'm familiar with, but it did take, which seemed to be fine. Seems like we've played the main line anyway. Bishop E6. What's the move here? Oh, I'm supposed to just take it. Interesting. Just take this. And then what? I guess they would take this way. And then queen e7 check. This is what Stockfish wanted. Oh, because if you go king f2, you get forked. You have to go king f1 or do a queen trade or bishop back. And then you just develop and the game goes on. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, I'm not familiar with those lines. So I was just doing regular stuff. Yep, and they just blundered the piece, and that was basically it. Uh, not much else. 
Ooh, look at Stockfish, guys. Look at Stockfish. A6. Because the queen can't take. Because why? Knight to A5. Where's the queen going to go? You can't go there. You can't go there. You can't go there. You have to go to A7 or take this pawn. Wait, why did Stockfish want this? It's not to trap the queen. Interesting. Basically just to trade off that knight for that bishop and then do other stuff. Okay, I didn't see that. I did not see that. Okay. And then we had the defensive move and everything worked out nicely. Okay, cool. All right. Um, what did you guys say? Oh, update the wins. Is it 241? 242? It's 242. Uh, okay. What did you guys say as far as... Yeah, it's a stretch break time for me. I'm going to give you guys a puzzle to work on. Did anybody say? Bishop and Rook sounds good? Okay. Let's do Bishop and Rook. Let's do it. Let me go over here. Bishops against Rooks. And let's see what I have for you guys today. Uh, uh okay some of these are interesting Ooh, wow this this puzzle is so long and so difficult wow i don't think i've ever seen a puzzle with such a long explanation for the solution wow there's got to be like hundreds of moves in this thing okay we're not doing that one definitely not doing that one okay okay Ooh, ooh, yeah, we're gonna do this one. We're gonna do this one. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, here we go, guys. Here we go. You're gonna like this. You're gonna like this one. Analysis. Let's set up a position. Let me go over here to puzzle, put the white to play and, and win on here. And white's king is on b4. Black's king is on a1. The rook is on d2. On is right here and here. And the bishop. Okay, it's white to play and win, and I won't say anything else. You guys take a look, analyze it, let me know what you think, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, good luck. What's the winning move for white?
Okay, guys, did you solve it already? All right, amazing wife. Give me some food to eat while I'm here, so bear with me. Um, okay. Let me read what you guys are saying here. C7, bishop sack on c4, king c3, wow, lots of options, okay. King c3. King c3 and c7 seem to be, and bishop d4, some people are saying, okay. All right, let me do a poll. I want to see. Do you think it's c7 or do you think it's king c3? Those seem to be the most popular choices. Here we go. It's on the menu. It's like soup and avocado and really good. All right. Ooh, pretty close. Pretty close. So it's about half. C7 and King C3. Slightly more saying C7. Okay. So if you want to vote, go ahead. I'll Actually, I'll give it a second just to make sure. I want to see if it changes. Yeah, it's evening out. Interesting. Okay. 50 50. Wow. That was funny. Okay. So half and half. All right. Got it. So let's start with King C3. This is the wrong move. Um, although it does kind of make sense. You're trying to attack the rook and you're taking away the square uh, from the rook to come behind the pawn. So you want to try to push the pawn. And if, let's say the rook goes here, maybe you're thinking you can keep moving down, right, and keep attacking it. The problem is uh, you're not going to be in time if you lose the bishop, so you don't want to do that because the rook would be able to stop it. And if you try to move, like, let's just say bishop, maybe bishop here. Uh, let's see, what's the problem? I guess the rook still sneaks around, okay, and it's going to come down and stop the pawn. And if this ever happens, you're not winning the game. Even if you can force the rook to capture the pawn, right? You're not going to win. It's just going to be a draw, best case scenario. Okay? So that's kind of the, the problem with king c3. Can't really stop that. c7 is immediately threatening the queen. So this is the correct move, okay? So you're immediately forcing black to do something to stop you. Okay? And... There's two options here for black. So let's start with uh, the first one. Well, I say there's two. There, there's actually a couple, I guess. But uh, first of all, if they try to go behind, you're going to play bishop c5. And you use the bishop to interfere with the rook. And now black has no way to really deal with this. If they go check, it doesn't really matter because you can just move here. They still can't go there because of the pawn. Okay? So the immediate move there doesn't really cut it. What they can do instead is go for a check first. And now, when you go here, they can come back. And what are they doing now? Well, they're attacking bishop. They're also threatening to go here. And you're probably thinking you can move the bishop. Let's just say bishop e3. Um, why doesn't this one work? This one is interesting, actually, to me. Looks like it's... Actually, this looks like an alternate win. Hold on. Did I miss something here? This wasn't supposed to be a winning line. And I don't know why. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It is, a, yeah, this is a win. This is a win. This actually works. Sorry, I got confused. This is this is why, going back here, after C7, nope, sorry, I'm all over the place. After C7, this is why they can't go check. They, they, that's why these rook moves don't work, because what I just showed you. Okay, that's right. So they have to play D4. This is the only move. And this is really interesting, because now... Well, let me ask you guys, what's, what do we do? 
What can we get the queen? Is the first question. Can we get the queen? An answer that first. A lot of people are saying no. Let's see what the problem is. You're correct. If you said no, you're correct. If you get a queen, black's going to go check. And you would like to be able to maybe go here so that they can't skewer you. But you can't because of this annoying pawn. If you go here or here, you walk into the skewer. Okay? So you don't want to do that. So where do you have to go? You have to go somewhere on the A file. The problem is that you're going to get checked again. And you have to go here, and then you're going to get checked again. And you can never step over because you always get skewered. And you can walk back, but it doesn't help you because what are you, what are you going to do, right? You can never get away sorry, from these checks unless you're willing to, at some point, step into the C file. And then, bam, it's a draw. Okay? So that's interesting, right? So you can't get the queen. Uh, and now we can kind of see the point behind D4 is it... It takes away this square, okay? So, uh, what do we do? What do we do? Yes, you are correct. Have to sacrifice the bishop. So we take on d4. We get rid of the pawn. And of course, if the rook tries to, you know, go like this. Oh, you can't. It's in check, of course. They can't even do that because it's check. So only move for black. I mean, if you move the king, we just get the queen, right? They have to take us with check. This, this is actually, I'm pretty sure somebody said it in the comments. Who said it? I, I, I can't find the name, but. I'm pretty sure somebody said it. Uh, Saavedra position. Oh, there it was. Who was that? Who was it? Where did it go? Soma. Saavedra position. This is a uh, a relatively popular endgame position. That's a, a win for white, despite the fact that black has a rook. I've done a video on this in the past, on just on this position. Um, and it's fascinating. If you haven't seen this, it's it's amazing. And for those of you who have seen it, I, I, I don't know, but I always find it interesting every time I look at it. It's like, man, this is such a cool position. So here's what happens. King to, to c5. Sorry. There's, there's two options. Uh, actually, there's three options. You can move the king to any of these squares. This one doesn't make any sense because it allows the rook to come in and take the pawn. So you have this one and this one. This is the next one that kind of makes sense. And it looks like it would be the winning move because you're attacking the rook. And how is the rook going to stop you from getting a queen? You can't go anywhere, right? But you guys probably can figure this out. Black simply goes back, and they have the skewer. Okay, so we get the queen. We actually lose the game. And we can go here, but the rook just comes behind and sacrifices, and the game is a draw. Okay? So, from this position, the only winning move is king to b5. And king to b5 is kind of doing the same thing. You're trying to get a queen. You're still stopping the rook from going behind, and it can't come down here because we take it, but you're not walking in line with the C file so that there's no skewer if the rook comes back here. Right? So what does black do? Black says, well, I'll just throw in a check. And again, you have the same issue. You don't want to go over here because you allow the rook behind. You don't want to go here, right? Because you get skewered with the rook here. So you move up. Okay, great. Black says check again. Now what do you do? Hmm. Yeah, what am I doing? Yeah, you guys are right. You guys are right. It's a trap. I'm I'm showing you like the wrong lines. I'm sorry. I'm distracted. 
The problem here is that if you keep doing the same thing, eventually you get pinned, right? I totally messed up this puzzle. I apologize. You get pinned. So you actually have to go the other way. Yeah, I'm going backwards somehow. Hmm. Okay. That's what it is. Sorry. I think it normally starts over here. And yeah, I'm just confusing myself. All right. You do have to go down this way. As somebody said, yeah, you guys are right. You guys are right. I'm sorry. But you don't want to go to C3 because of the same idea. You have to watch out for this. So you go to B3. Okay. The rook can't go there. The rook can't go there. It looks like it's not going to end well for black. They can throw in one more check. And you can go to C2. Yeah, you're supposed to go down the board this way. I'm sorry. I got it totally backwards. You go to C2. And now it looks like you're winning. Looks like you're winning. Because the rook can't go here. It can't come behind. What's black going to do, right? Black says, rook to d4. And why would they go to d4? Does anybody know why black would go here? Yes. Yes, it's a stalemate trap. When you get the queen, they go here. And they fork you. And when you take, you have stalemated the black king. Pretty clever, right? Pretty clever. You say, what do you do? How do we win? What can white play? Who sees it? Yes, exactly. You promote to a rook. Because now, if black goes here, you take it. And it's not a stalemate because the rook doesn't move diagonally, and you win the game. But some of you are probably thinking, but Nelson, now it's just a rook against a rook. Isn't this a draw? And the answer is no. Why? Because black's king is stuck in the corner. You're actually threatening to checkmate it over this way. So black says, okay, I'll stop that with rook to a4. And now it's white to play and win. What's the winning move? What's the winning move? Somebody said rookie eight. So trying to come this way. Not a bad idea. You got a queen now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Turn it into a queen. No, yeah, you guys are right. King b3. King b3. What are we doing by going king b3? <laughs> well, we're attacking the rook. That's obvious. But we're also unleashing the rook this way to threaten checkmate again in a different way. And now it turns out that black has no way to stop both of these threats. You can either save the rook... Or you can move your king over to stop checkmate, but you can't do both. And so, let's say they go here. Now we simply take the rook, and this is a winning endgame. And if they decide to save the rook, uh, we come down for checkmate. It's beautiful, right? So, Saavedra position, we saw, and then the original puzzle actually had some other stuff that led to that position. So there's like a whole theme of puzzles that actually start in a, in a weird position, and then after a few different things, you end up in the Saavedra position, which is kind of cool, right? Um, unfortunately, I, I messed it all up when I was, I got confused thinking that you had to go up this way, because normally it like starts up here, and you have to work your way back, and I just flipped it in my mind, but that's pretty cool. All right. Let's jump back in uh, now that you guys did that, and let's see what we can do with the next game. Hopefully that was enjoyable. <laughs> You'll definitely find it during a Blitz game, yeah. <laughs> All right, new game. Oh, wait a second. Let me refresh.
All right. Oh, D6. All right, let's play D4. Somebody said there's a gambit you play here where you play C3. Let's try it. What's this called? The bird gambit. All right. Give it a shot. I could even play this. Hmm. Then it's kind of like a Danish gambit. Should we do that? Should we try that instead, or should we take with the knight? Yeah, let's, let's do bishop c4. Let's see what happens. Bishop e6. So immediately I'm wondering, can I take it and go here? Queen d7, I take, knight c6. Looks like I have to take. And then this looks like a good way to proceed. And for those of you wondering why I'm not taking here, I could. I could do that. But I'm basically saying I don't care if black takes me because then I get to get another piece into the action as well. So it's like a double pawn sacrifice. I'm just going to keep playing aggressively and go on the offensive. And I'm not worried about that right now. But this is probably also totally playable. Problem is it gives black a chance to develop some pieces. Whereas right now I'm just going to constantly keep the pressure up. Eating cereal? No, not cereal. Cereal is not really, cereal is not really healthy for you. Did you know that? Like ninety nine percent of cereals are not good for you. Okay. So now I might take, I might castle, or I might play knight g five. Because if my knight jumps in here, that's a pretty annoying thing for black. And how do you defend that? You're not going to move your king there. I mean, you could, but black's not going to do that. You're not going to play d5. You could, but then my queen's coming in. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go ahead and see how, how is black going to defend this. Oh, what was I eating? It was like some soup that my wife made. It was like chicken and some beans and vegetables and different spices. And avocado, stuff like that. When is the rook better than the bishop and the knight? Or when is the queen better than three minor pieces? Okay, so three minor pieces, almost always better than the queen. Especially if there's some pawns that can sort of help defend the pieces. The only situation would be like towards the end of the game, maybe where the pieces are really scattered and the queen can sort of jump around better. But if the Pieces can get coordinated with some pawns to help them. Pieces are going to win every, every time. The rook, sometimes at the end of the game, if the rook has lots of files and ranks to use, sometimes the rook can outperform the pieces. But if there's again, if there's lots of pawns on the board, the, the minor pieces are going to be much better. So black decides to abandon that and just develop a piece. Okay. So I'm thinking we still take here. It covers this. Knight a5, I'm not really concerned with. Let's go ahead and do that. H6, so that, I mean, that can't be the right move. It just can't be. The reason I say that is... Black needs to develop. They're just playing a pawn move, there, and they're creating more weaknesses. There's just no way. Can't believe that that's a good move. Um, so I think I'm just going to now probably develop or castle, but I think I want to get another knight into here because once we get that knight in, then we have more tactics available to us. So let's go ahead. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Am I still streaming? Excellent connection. Oh no! Should I refresh? Did chess.com just die? Is anybody else on chess.com that's playing a game? Is it working right now? What a terrible moment to get disconnected. It died. Oh no. So sad. 
Oh, yep, there it is. There's Danny. Server cooldown. Oh no. Server overload. Everybody stop playing. Everybody disconnect from chess.com. Quick, quick. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's too bad. Switch to Lee Chess, yeah. Oh man. That was an interesting game too. It was just about to get really interesting. That makes me sad. I wonder if the game's still going to be there when it comes back. Probably not. I mean, in theory it should be, but I, I don't really know. Play online, I think. Yeah, it's, st it's still trying, but it's not working. Oh, what a sad day. Oh, no. Well, we're going to have to at least look at what was going to happen in that game. Or what we could predict might have happened. Where, what, Where's my low? Oh, yep, yeah, there it is. All right. Time for uh, Leeches. Time for Leeches. I just want to at least look at that. Um, Where is it at? Where is it at? Okay. I'm going to have to readjust everything now. So, what happened? We played d4. They took it. We played c3. They took it. We played bishop c4. They played bishop e6. And let me just see. You know, bishop e... Let me actually do this. I want to see a few extra lines here. Okay. Queen b3 has a very high win rate, according to the lead chess database over here. Queen c8 is most commonly played. Ooh, guess what the best move is? Knight to g5. Okay. Knight to c6 is actually the top engine move here, so our opponent did do a good thing. We took... And then they played h6, which... Yeah, h6 is not really played much at all, and it's, it's a terrible move. I could have told you that, right? Best move is knight takes c3. Cool, which is what we did. So we were up plus five, as expected. And before I look any further, let me just make sure one more time that the game is not uh, back. Yeah, it's gone, isn't it? Yeah, that game like doesn't even exist anymore. So sad. Okay, so basically, I'm coming in with my knight to go here, and and black's not going to be able to defend that. So, some moves that have been played. Knight to f6 is the common move here. And then knight to b5, just like I mentioned, going for this, since knight d5 was taken away. And how does black deal with that? They can't. They can move their king, but we take it anyway. They can move their rook, but then the bishop comes. Look at this. We're probably going to castle either way, and black is already toast. Okay. Other moves that have been tried. Knight to a5. Walks into queen b5, which is a fork. After c6. Oh. Going back to the weakness over here. Check. King moves somewhere, and then you take... And then you take the piece. Not only do you win a piece, the king is also in big trouble. But however you want to look at it, black was about to be in trouble. Oh, didn't mean to do that. All right. Is chess.com back to, to stay? Are we, are we ready? Are we ready? All right, we're back. Oh, I got to move this again. Okay. It's too bad. We were going to... That was going to be a quick, quick game and didn't happen. We're playing a 2182, guys. From India. Better stick with the Bishop B5 for this one. 
Better stick with bishop b5 for this one. Queen c7. I'm going to play knight c3. I'm going to take it. And black's going to take with the queen, most likely. Usually, oh, surprising. Usually when they do that, they, they try to preserve their pawn structure. That was a surprising choice there. Okay. I think I'm going to play e5. And why am I going to do that? It doesn't allow the bishop to come out. It keeps this guy clamped there. And really black's position, it's, it's hard to develop all your pieces. I mean, you can't go here. You can't go here. You can't move this. You could do this. Let's go ahead and defend. We know it's going to get attacked anyway. Yep. And I think I'm just going to play d3. I'm going to try to keep it kind of cramped off. This bishop can go here, but again, it's still not really doing much because the pawns are in the way. I might play h4 to try to chase the knight. It'll probably force h5, but then that opens up a very nice hole for me. This is important, right? Notice what I'm going to do here. If I just move a random piece there, black's going to attack it with a pawn. But if I can bait h5, then all of a sudden there's no more pawn to attack me. Now, he didn't do it. So I'm, I'm going to make the knight move back and gain even more space and block in some more pieces. So I, I'm really liking my position right now. So knight's going to probably try to come here or here. Here we have g4 to make it leave again, or I could even play g4 now. It seems a bit aggressive. Here is a bit more annoying. What I might do is play here. Then I would have c4 to really just try to take away all the options from black's pieces. So let's jump jump in. Knight to e4. And wherever the knight goes, I'm going to be able to chase it away if I want. Okay. So g4. It can go here. I don't really care. I could chase it away again. Right here. I lose the pawn. Ah, but then I have a nice follow-up with bishop f4. Yeah. Okay, we're going to do it. We're going to go for that. We're going to chase it away. Takes, takes, takes. And notice this move, bishop f4. I mean, I don't, ha I don't have to, actually. I could play bishop f4 first if I don't want to sacrifice the pawn. So the question is, does it make sense to sack the pawn or not? So c3 takes, takes, takes. Check doesn't quite cut it because the queen takes. I lose a piece. So bishop f4. Queen has to go. Only move really is here. Yeah, it's maybe I don't want to give up that pawn. Maybe I, maybe I should go bishop f4. All right, I think I will. Pawn second thought, because I, I, I do like this pawn. It really clamps down, so I don't want to just sacrifice it for no reason unless I have a good follow-up. Since I didn't see a good follow-up, I'm going to defend it. And now I can play c3 next move and go into this, and I keep my pawn. But notice, the bishops are terrible. They're terrible. I'm trying to keep that as long as I can and use my knights effectively. That's what I'm trying to do. Because eventually, black's going to be able to figure out a way to open the position up. Maybe it's f6, maybe it's this, maybe it's pushing these guys, and some, you know, at some point, castles. Okay. C3, do I like the look of that? I think I do. I think that looks pretty solid for me. We'll go ahead and trade this off. The knight has to, well, I guess it doesn't have to take, but most likely. And still, bishops are not super effective. I can actually go here, and then I would have the pawn, but it allows black to trade one of those, those bishops that's not doing much, so it's probably not the right decision. I kind of want to play a4, a5 to clamp down some more. Let's go ahead and do that. 
Now they might play a5 here and try to relocate the bishop like this. Nope, they're going to let me do it. Okay. Trying to come in this way or just get the rooks. All right. I can still go here and force this. The queen's probably going to go to d7. No, well, let's go ahead and play a5. And of course, I'm happy if black wants to take this. No, I didn't think so. But now I've locked in these guys. So this guy is even harder to get out. And I could attack this actually with a move like queen e3. I could do that. How does black defend that is the question. Maybe they just push, but that doesn't look very good. Yeah, let's go queen e3. This looks like it's got to be a powerful move. It's got to be a powerful move, attacking the pawn there. Not easy for black to defend. I'm not actually sure what they're going to do. And really focusing in on this bishop. And if I can keep it stuck back there, it's going to end well for me. Oh, he defends with the rook. Yeah, I, didn't, I don't know. I didn't even think about that move. That is an option, huh? But c4. Then he can move here. Check, takes, takes. Do I like the look of that, though? D7. Yeah, I didn't see that move. That's a pretty good solution. Uh, hmm. Totally missed that idea for some reason. Totally missed it. Should I go back and play f4 and relocate the bishop? Queen g3 and go like this in f4? No. Ooh, okay, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to jump in. And here's why. Once I get this pawn, I'm going to try to play c4 next. And the point is going to be that the rook is out of squares, except this one. But that's going to hopefully allow me to... Bring my queen up and in like this, essentially, is what, I, is what I'm trying to do here. The rook here, I'm going to try to come in like this, is what I'm trying to do, okay? Now, I don't know if I want to defend this pawn or not. Also, if I want to defend this or not. I don't have to. I could play. Uh, but then my bishop's going to become loose. Also this, do I want to defend that with like a rook move? Yeah, let's defend that. I think I think I want to defend it also if I ever take here, now all of a sudden it's lined up on the king. Very tricky position though. The problem with bishop b5 is this move, guys. The rook is here, so I, I don't want to do that right now. Until I play f3. But I don't have time for that right now. I wanted to defend this guy, which maybe I didn't need to. I don't know. Yeah, so he wants to play e5. Okay, if I take, 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 I lose the bishop. Can I get away with sacrificing the bishop?
probably can't sack the bishop. That's that's too much. Man, all right, this is not going how I wanted it to go, folks. No, it's not. Because I didn't want to lose this pawn for free. Then I don't really have much happening. All right, we're going to have to change plans because the other one's not working. So we're going to adapt here and go for a new plan. I'm losing this, but I don't really care because the bishop's defending. And now I'm, I'm trying to break through this way. And it's a totally different strategy. Because I missed, I missed this idea. Alright, we gotta go for the check here. I'm going to have to sack this probably at any moment now, but I'm trying to get my other rook in position first. So he's threatening checkmate. I don't think I have a choice. Trying to get the queen and rook involved. Still threatening it. Also, the bishop is lining up. It's starting to look promising. Question is, can I find the checkmate before I lose on time? That's the, that's the question. Yeah, he wants to go there. He just wants to go there. I think I'm going to trade and, and get the double pawns. Gonna get the double pawns here, guys. Very interesting position. I think we push this one first and then we just boom, boom, boom.
Ooh, I could trap the rook. I could trap the rook. Saw it, but now I at least get the pawn. Unless he's going to leave it trapped. He's going to leave it trapped. I'm going to go get it. Or I'm going to try to go get it. Maybe I'll run over here too. Little crooked path in action. You remember that, guys, from the previous streams? All right, now we're going to go. We're going to go get the rook. Yeah, I think we got it. Oof. Oh, wait a second. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. That, that was so tricky. That was so tricky. Man. What am I doing? What am I doing? Throw in the game. Throw in the game. Throw in the game, guys. It's gonna be a draw. It's gonna be a draw. Never mind, I'm gonna win. Spoke too soon. How did I lose on time? How did I lose on time? You guys know how frustrating that is? <laughs> that should not have happened. I that should not have happened. I should have been pre-moving. That was very that was that was huge. What a ridiculous way to lose the game. Even if I just sacked the queen and checkmate with the king and a rook, I could have done it in three seconds. That was so, so silly. Three? I had three seconds. How did I lose three seconds on two moves? Very tilted. Very tilted. I don't even want to look at the game. Nope, nope, don't even want to see it. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. That should have been an easy win. I, I'm very disappointed at myself. Very disappointed. All right, especially here. Once I once you let me get the queen with t at eight seconds, that's plenty of time. That's just ridiculous that I let this happen. That's unacceptable. That is unacceptable. Let's play the King's Indian. And I like to play Bishop F5 here. Um, unfortunately, I don't remember all the theory. I just know some of the ideas. I think one of them is you try to just put the knight on E4. 
before they get to play e4. And if they attack you, they attack you, you go back. But yeah, I'm going to jump in. And if they take, I take. If they go here, I think I just trade and then go back, if I'm not mistaken. Bishop e3, I don't think I've seen that one before. But again, just taking, putting the bishop here is the idea. If the knight ever moves, you take this. d5 is another one I remember. You take here and you, you line up this way. The six hour stream, yeah, something like that. Something like that. Still I'm still so upset at myself. That's that one's gonna that one's gonna take a while to get over. Uh, when you're up a queen at the end of the game like that, I mean that's that's just unacceptable. That's unacceptable. You can't do that. You cannot do that. We're trying to take advantage of these light squares. That's what we're trying to do. We've got a nice little Battery here. We've got everything sort of blockaded. So white can't really do what they're trying to do, right? So, yeah. It's feel, it feels like this is a good position for us. Oh, and then it was kind of a double whammy. I forgot. Because the other game that we played so well, chess.com crashed, right? And we, we didn't win that one. So it was like back-to-back, -back, just unfortunate things happening. Probably trying to like trade or something. Also attacking here. I don't really care about that, but maybe I'll defend. Use the rook later. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. If white wants to trade, they can trade. We'll play an end game. It's okay. I don't really know what they're doing. Attacking this pawn, maybe. Okay. Usually you don't want to just defend with your rooks, but in this case my rooks weren't doing anything anyway, and I might want to push these pawns uh, as well, and so it kind of makes more sense. He's going for... Ooh. Ooh. Does that work? I don't think so, because I can run away, unless I'm missing something here. I don't know what white's trying to do here. What is happening? I have to go here, only move. I can't go there, it's checkmate. So that's the idea. Okay, hmm. I can't go here because I walk into that. Actually, maybe I can go there. Check. No, I don't want, I don't want to go there, I don't think. Here? Yeesh. Yikes. Yikes. Oh, that's checkmate. That's just checkmate, yeah. Good game by our opponent. Well, we're seeing it in full effect. We're seeing it in full effect. This is what happens when you get tilted. This is what happens.
Oh, man. No, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. Um, you get tilted or you lose some confidence, and then it, it's like it, it takes a while to get past it. Yeah, it's a real thing. That's what we're seeing right now. I'm trying to win a pawn. <sighs> this is a good example of what not to do, by the way. I can't even take it. Trying to lure the bishop away so that I can take here. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my. We have some tactics here if Black's not careful. Hey, welcome to Stalematers. Some good news. Thanks. I needed something. All right, do I have a tactic to win a piece here is the question. I mean, I think we just take it pinned. It's a free piece. How am I feeling? I was feeling a lot better before I lost that other game. The last game didn't even bother me because I knew I was tilted, so that one makes sense. I wasn't even thinking. But the other one, still feeling it. I'm still feeling it. <laughs> All right, so we can't take... Hey, Jacob. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. I appreciate it. Here's the thing. I'm up a piece. Did I... I don't even really need to... Can I just go here, maybe? Like that. He takes me. I take him. And all is good with the world. Let's go there. Oh, my quick... Oh, my goodness. Oh, it just gets worse. It just gets worse. <laughs> now it's just funny. Now it's just funny. It's okay. I have two pieces. This is at least playable, but I didn't mean to lose my queen. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take this. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to take this too. <laughs> What a castle. Hold on, hold on. We have we have a rook and a knight for a queen. So this I mean this is 
This is a normal game. This is a normal game, somehow. I'm gonna probably go here and play a4. Oh my. I don't really want to let him take that, so I'm going to probably move it here. Oop, I lost a pawn. It's okay. I'm going to go here and play a4 and try to take this one. Play 95. <laughs> You joined, and all of a sudden you're a member. It was probably Barack from one of the other times when he was gifting everybody memberships. <laughs> that was good content. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We got him. We got him. I think. I think we got him. He wants to go here, maybe, or something? I'm going to defend that pawn. I don't want to lose that pawn, so I'm going to defend it. So now we have two rooks for a queen. Maybe our opponent's tilted too. Battle of the, the two tilted players. Okay, he's going to try to checkmate me. How do I stop that? Knight here doesn't do it. F3, I can't play. He's going to come here. If we could play H3, he can't go there or there. Ah, but he could go here. So I could play A3. Dun, 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 dun. And then if he goes there... F3 doesn't cut it. That's a yeah, that's a good that's a pretty serious threat. Ah, I could go like this. Nope, I can't. I don't know how to stop it. That seems extreme. Seems very extreme. G3. So that I could go to F4, but now that I'm checkmated over here. Wow, what a what a move by our opponent. What a move. Are we just lost? Are we just lost? Is it that, just that simple? Game over? Hmm. Huh, huh, huh. I'm going to go here so that I can meet this with F3. Because otherwise I don't know how to stop the checkmate. Okay, he's going to take that. All right. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. No, it's not a checkmate. Ah, oh, because the king's not on the g8. That's too bad. That's too bad. We almost had him. And by almost, I mean it wasn't really that close. Let's go here and put the knight on a good square for once. Oh, boy. Let's go here. All right, now I can breathe a little bit about getting checkmated on G2. Now I can actually start doing something useful with my rooks. Let's start by going here. It's an open file. The bishop's strong, though. I want to get rid of that bishop. I only have four pawns left against six. That's another issue. We have too many pawns down. Let's keep attacking the queen. Just keep attacking the queen. Yeah, he wants to take that. Don't think we want to allow that. So let's go here. And then we can double up. And think about how we can get the knight into the game. Knight to d5, maybe. Knight to g4 if he pushes. All right, knight to d5 takes, takes, takes. Check. Yeah, it looks good enough to me. Let's go ahead. Give it a try. I'm 
I'm just doing some calf raises, if anybody's wondering. Hey, welcome to Stalematers, Victor. Thank you. So he wants to leave the knight there. Interesting. I'm going to play h3 just so I have a place to go while I try to think of what to do next. Ah. Uh huh. So he opens up this square. So that's an idea. Could play g3 and use this. Hey, Nihilus is back. Gifted five memberships. Awesome. Thank you. What is that? 602? I can do math. Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Why did I go there? Because I didn't know what else to move. Why I went there. This bishop's so annoying, it just stops my rooks from doing anything. I, I really want to get rid of it, but I, I can't. I just can't do it. Maybe now I can try to go get it. Maybe there's a chance. Let's try. Let's try. Let's try to get the bishop. Probably just going to go back. Nope. Oh, he's going to let me get it. Okay. Let's take it. Now, 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 now. Now maybe we can do something with the rooks. A lot of pawns, though. That's the problem. There's a lot of pawns. Especially if this guy gets to become a pass pawn. But what we could probably do is pile up on it. Uh, but if we sacrifice, it's a losing endgame. So how do we... How do we do this? Now, now, we, yeah, now, we, have, now we have some cool ideas happening. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This is hanging, but I want to try to be more aggressive with my rooks here, if I can. Hmm, very interesting. Very interesting. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to go here and try to try to start taking some more stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's throw in a check. Ooh, 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 ooh. Do we have... Let's take this. Hold on, there's going to be F3. Hold on, this is getting... Is getting wild now. But I can defend that. Oh, he pushes that one. Okay. Okay. Let's throw in the check. It looks like it's going to be a draw. Looks like this game's going to be a draw cuz I I'm going to be forced to take the check. Can't can't do anything. Last time you checked there was only 6 losses. Yeah, I'm going to blame chess.com on that one. It crashed my game and started the tilt. No, it it actually was the game after that that really did it to me. Oh, he's trying to stop that. Okay, okay. He's trying to stop the perpetual check. So he wants to win. He wants to win. It makes sense. He's got so many pawns. Why not? He still wants to win.
What an interesting position this is. Oh, what? Did I mess up? Did I mess up? Guess I did, huh? Ah, uh ah, -huh, ah, uh ah, -huh, ah, uh -huh. wait a minute, wait a minute. Where have I seen this before? King here, king here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's going on? He still has two pawns though. Ooh, this is so interesting. I'm gonna go here. I'm in time to stop this one, but I'm now I'm worried about the other ones too. Ooh, but I have mine. This is gonna be real interesting. It's a race. It's a race. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who's gonna win. I'm gonna win, right? I'm gonna win. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a game. What a wild, wild game. Hey Jacob, thank you. <laughs> what a crazy game. What a crazy game. Yes, tilt is gone, at least enough that I want to look at this one. Whoa. Hey, at least at least we finished the game. Imagine if that would have happened like one move before the game ended. Just imagine the state that I would be in. Jacob, wow, appreciate you. Jacob coming in with the double super chats. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Come on, chess.com. I wanted to look at that game, actually, because that was actually pretty interesting stuff. Server cooldown. Yeah, shout out to Jacob. Everybody say thanks, Jacob. Okay. Well, maybe this is a sign that it's time to end the stream. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to try to at least look at that game and maybe play one last game, but... Two hundred forty-three wins. Yeah, thanks. Let's see if we're back yet. Nope, nope, we're not back. Okay. Well, maybe another time. I I guess I don't know. Hey, Sebastian, thank you. Your first super on a live stream. That's cool. It tells me that. Nice. Way to go. Yeah, we did get the memory goal. It wasn't a total it wasn't a total loss, even though we did get tilted. We did get tilted. Time to go take a walk, do some exercise. At least we ended on a win, yes. Rots, hey, thank you. Hey, also your first super on a live stream. Nice. Very nice. Oh, it's back. 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 Just in time. I was about to give up on it. All right, let's check real quick. This wild game here. Wild, wild game. Okay. We do a bunch of crazy stuff. Our opponent literally just blunders a piece. And then I blunder the queen. <laughs> For anybody confused, the knight is pinned. Okay? The knight is pinned. So it cannot move. Which is why I was able to take this. And then, in my moment of tilt, I forgot that it's no longer pinned. So my queen is under attack. My queen is under attack. 
So I need to deal with that. Like, moving my queen would have been, you know, probably a good move. Instead, I'm like, oh no, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to, you know, attack stuff and develop and whatever. Okay, we lose the queen. However, our opponent immediately blunders something else here and allows me to take this and get the, the rook. Okay, great. So now we have... This is pretty much even, and so then we have a knight and a rook for a queen, which is not terrible, but as you can see by the e eval bar, it's still bad for me. All right. So then a bunch of stuff happens, and even though we have two rooks for the queen, uh, black's pieces are much better than ours. Our rooks are terrible. They can't even do anything, and then the bishop is just so much better than the knight. Okay, and I also have to watch out that I don't get checkmated. So for example, if I play a random move like this, queen g4, and how do I stop checkmate? This is what I was afraid of. F3, you know, it's captured. It just looks look like I'm, I'm dead meat. So we have to avoid that, okay? So I played this because I wanted to meet this with F3. Fair enough, all right. He takes 1981, and now it's kind of equal. Interesting. Now it's kind of equal, all right. And we had this whole phase of the game that you guys remember. It was pretty weird. Finally got rid of the annoying bishop. Okay. And here I thought it was going to be a draw. Because what I was expecting was black to do something like check. And check. And just go back and forth. Or even try to push the pawn. In which case I was just going to go check, 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 check. Check. King moves, check, you know, king moves. You can never get away from my checks, right? You just constantly check. They didn't want to draw. They went, they went here. Okay, great. And then they sacrificed, and I actually missed that I wasn't going to be able to stop this. So they got me there. But you guys remember the endgame study that I just looked at? Uh... Where the you can check, right? And black has to make a decision what to do, right? They didn't go to the right square. All they had to do was go here. What am I going to do? I, I have no more tricks. I have nothing else to do. Can't stop it. I lose. But they gave me this, right? And we saw that in the, the endgame study. Somebody said, when would I use that endgame study? Here you go. I was, I was using that knowledge, right? To go for the skewer. Okay. They noticed it. And now I have to get my king over here, because they're about to go here and do this. But I'm just in time. King g1. They push. Okay, get my king involved. Just in the nick of time to stop this guy. Engine wanted me to go over there. Interesting. And allow this, and then come back with check? Why would I do that? Weird. I don't... Okay, I'm not quite following that. How's my goat? You mean gout, probably. You probably mean gout. Um, it's it's getting better, I think. I haven't had any attacks recently, so that's good. That's good. Thanks for asking. Okay, and then it's a race, and I win the race, and we win the game. Wow. Have you ever played a sport? Yeah, I used to play soccer a lot. I played a lot of... Growing up, it was soccer and chess. played both of those for quite a while. And then sort of went the chess direction instead of the soccer direction. Um... <laughs> All right. I'm going to play one last game. I don't know why. I'm just feeling like a long stream today. I'm going to play one last game. I'm going to stretch my calves too, but I'm going to play final game here. Oh, I have an idea, actually. I have an idea. I have a... I have a standing desk for a reason. Maybe I should use it. All right, I thought that might be funny if I just stayed down there for a little bit. Okay, somebody asked for the Stafford Gambit. Let's try it. And I don't know the theory because I haven't studied this like Eric Rosen. Oh, he doesn't take it. That's too bad. 
Maybe he'll play the Halloween Gambit. No. This one. Okay. Well, I don't know what I'm doing at this point. So... I'm just going to play real passive this game. Passive and solid because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to put my bishops here in castle and not worry about it. Nope, I'm not worried about it. I shouldn't pre-move that. Okay, now I can. Let's see. Do I want to take this or let him take me? I think I'll let him take me. Let's castle. We can take back. We were at the pawn. Okay, I'm going to... Hmm. Do I want to take that and try to attack the weak pawn, or do I want to just leave it alone? That's the question, isn't it? I guess I'll take it. That's an annoying knight. It opens up lots of possibilities for sacrifices and stuff over here. So I think we want to get rid of that knight. Let's go ahead and try to force the capture here so I can use this pawn to help me play d5. I don't think he's going to take it. I think they're probably going to retreat. Something like this is what I'm expecting. One of these moves. But I would be happy if they do take. And the reason is I want to play... Yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, I wanted to play d5 and this kind of was going to... Make sure that I could play it. Actually, I guess I have it defended enough anyway. Maybe that was not needed. But regardless, I want to move this so that I can get my bishop out. Right? I don't want to leave the bishop such a terrible piece for too long. Now that I'm developed, it's time to sort, sort, sort of get my pieces better. I'm going to raise it up a little bit more. Okay, there we go. All right. So let's see. I think this is a good idea. Trading these bishops. Because my bishop's not doing a whole lot. If we trade it for this guy, that looks like it's going to free up my position a little bit. And we can go into an endgame. Uh, with a the advantage here. Okay, knight here. Let's do that. Jump in with the knight. Uh-huh. Do I want to jump in with the knight is the, is the question, though. Do I want to just bring my rook over? Oh, he's attacking here. Yes. I could also go back this way to put pressure on the pawn like that. I'm going to go forward. I don't see a follow-up immediately, but I'm going, to, I'm going to go forward. Centralizing the knight, bringing it forward. It just seems like it's it's got to be the right way to do it. Okay, so here we go. Here's my plan. Initially, I was going to take this, but then he takes, my knight is under attack. I'm going to have to defend it, which I could do with c5, so that's definitely a possibility. I also could go here, and then white has to be careful about that. Yeah, I think I am going to do that. This is very annoying. For example, knight to b3, attacks the queen, defends my bishop, attacks the rook. An immediate tactic. So where does the queen go? I don't know. If you go here, I'm going to play knight h5 and fork these guys and win the bishop that way. You go there. Okay. Can I play knight here? If the knight takes, I take, he takes. No, it doesn't work because it's defended. It's defended. All right, so that's not going to cut it for me. I guess rook e8 is a good move. Probably where I want my rook to be, and then maybe we just move the queen up to put some pressure on these things. I mean, this one thing, this one pawn, I don't know. You're standing while watching to support me. Nice. No, seriously, if you guys haven't taken a break this whole stream, you need to you need to take a break. You need to get up, stretch your legs. It's important. Do some calf raises. It's one of the best exercises to quickly get the uh the blood from your feet back up to your heart. Working out the calves. Okay. 
I think we're going to go queen d7. Usually when somebody attacks your rook like this, it's always really nice to have the option to recapture with the other rook, okay? Like this. So rather than just leaving the sit here and I have to retake with the queen, I'm going to move my queen up. And I've now I always have the option to recapture with this guy. Okay, and you can see why that would be beneficial. It takes this rook, which is doing nothing over here in the corner, puts it on an open file. Now, white's probably not going to take me. They're hoping that I take them because of the same reason. But at least now we can maintain the tension in a in a good way. Okay. Queen d7. Now white has to deal with this threat. Since you heard what happened, you do take breaks when after you sit for a long time. Good. Good. And part, a big part of what happened to me too was the the gout that I had. Uh, they put me in a boot, which immobilized my my foot, and that was not a good decision. So that was a big part of it too. Doctors do not always have the correct solutions. I, I've learned. Um, sometimes they do, but sometimes they get it wrong. Okay. I don't like the pin. That's annoying because I can't move my knight now. Very annoying move. We could sacrifice. And if the rook takes, we jump over here. We're going to get a bishop and a pawn. And some maybe some active stuff happening. Or I could just go back here so it's defended. That might be the easiest thing. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. I think I will do that. It's very dangerous to leave it undefended with the bishop in line like that. It just opens up so many tactics for white, so I want to avoid that. Play the goat gambit. <laughs> if, there, if anybody can find an opening that has the word goat in it, like a legit... Any any chess opening that has the word goat in it, I, I will give you a shout out. And I will look at that opening right now. But I've never heard of that, so I don't think there is one. Okay, he's going to take it. So obviously I have to take back. And again, my bishop is under attack here. I mean, it's not under attack, but it's, it's undefended. And there's an x-ray on it from the queen. X-ray is when a piece is lined up with another piece. There might be pieces in between, but you always have to pay attention because, yeah, he moves and now it's an attack, right? So um, I need to move this. Now I could trade, grab the pawn, but then I lose this one. It gets interesting. It gets very interesting. But I could also just go back and retreat, and then we have pressure on the pawn. So I guess it's worth... Calculating this one more time. Takes, 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 takes. So it's even. I can attack the queen, but he could trade, and then that's not good for me. And if I traded first and then went here, takes, I can come down here. I have a threat, but it's not that good, and I have to be careful about my back rank, so I don't like that. So with all that being said, I think the simplest thing is going to be to just retreat my bishop. Probably right here looks good. So there we go. We go back. And again, attacking the pawn on f5. Hey, Alan. Um, yeah, it's it's a relatively small percentage. So I, what is the t-shirt? Like 30-something dollars? I think I would probably get like, I want to say like 7 or $8 maybe. Something like that. It's not a huge percentage. So yeah, if you want to support me, uh, you know, there's other ways that are that are better. Like PayPal link is the best way because that just directly, I, everything else, somebody gets a cut. So um. Huh, just goes back. Interesting decision there. So I'm, I, I want to play like c6, because then it's very, very solid here. And I might even think about this, guys. Look at this. Bishop c7, queen d6. This is a good idea to keep in mind. If you can line up your queen and your bishop like this, it can be very difficult for your opponent to stop that, particularly when the knight on f3 is no longer there, because that's usually the piece that would defend that. And it's not. 
And that's not that easy for White to get that there. Okay. And he's going to just make it easy for me. But yeah, I'm absolutely going to do that. Because now I can do it with tempo even. Get the, get the bishop there. Here we go. Probably going to force g3. Which creates some more long-term weaknesses. So definitely thinking about that. I think I will. Go ahead and force that. And now we can uh, maybe even come over here. Start attacking stuff over here. Yeah, so we induced a weakness, right? Look at the king. It's more, sorry. It's more weak here. So let's go ahead. Keep trying to create weaknesses. I still have the rook defending. And we, we see this tension, right? He doesn't want to take me because it brings my rook over. I don't want to take him or them because it brings their rook over. So we're probably just going to see this sit like this for a while. This is pretty common. Oh. Surprising. Surprising move, because now I have total control over the file, and white can't go there. So I, I'm happy about that. I'm very happy about that. Funny, I was just talking about that, too. Okay. That's pinned. So if I could take attack the knight, so bishop here is an idea. Um, What else? Yeah, let's, let's do that. Threatening the knight because of the pin. Probably going to go back here. And that's okay. We're just slowly but surely kind of improving our position here. Ah, but that opens up the queen coming in. You go knight to... Okay, knight to e2. Yeah, better move. Better move. Okay. So... It's probably too greedy to do that. Now, maybe I can get away with it, but it's probably too greedy. But I need to make a move. I don't want to lose on time this game. So... I guess let's play b5. It's a move that, you know, doesn't create too many weaknesses. You could argue that this is a weakness, but white can't go there at the moment to take advantage of that. So it's probably not a huge deal. Okay, we can go here. Sorry, we can go here. I'm just going to go here. I think I want my queen to stay over on this side, this area. Okay, bringing the knight in. Do I want to take just to open up the rook is the question. Normally, I don't want to give up my bishop, but in this particular case, bishop's not really doing a whole lot, so I might consider that. I'm going to wait just a, just a minute. Actually, no, because the queen comes in. Maybe I will. Maybe I will do that. Defeat Magnus, yeah. Uh, I, w I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. I want to go here, but then the rook comes over. Uh, let's play h6. I don't want to get back rank checkmated. And I'm running out of time, so I'm going to start uh, to move faster and not think through things so much. Just kind of go on some instincts a little bit. And I think my instincts say go ahead and go into the end game and see what happens. Okay, this is the weakness here. This is the big weakness here. How do I deal with this? Uh, hmm. Yeah, now I regret that move, actually. I wish this pawn was back here. This is just temporary. I'm not leaving this rook like this for too long. I'm going to try to figure out a different solution. Getting my knight in there. The problem is b3. Even, let's see, where else can my knight go that can support this knight? e7. Maybe a king. Maybe the king's the piece that I need right there. Yeah, that's probably the easiest thing. I guess I could just play this, though, right now, actually. Boom, boom, boom. Could do that. Because if he plays b4, then I jump over like this. So he's, that's what he's probably thinking about right now. So yeah, maybe I just play c5. Yeah, okay. All right, let's do it. And I'm going to take with the rook so that I don't get pinned. That would be a huge mistake to let myself get pinned. So we're going to take with the rook. And then we're going to have um, an end game where I'm going to have this pass d pawn. This guy. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, of course, if white doesn't take me, I'm going to push on by. Okay, they do. So let's go ahead, go for the trade here. They don't have to trade, but 
Yep, all right. And now this is what I was talking about. This guy is passed. Rather than pushing it right away, though, I am going to bring my king. Because if you push it too fast, too far, the king comes over and gobbles it up and you lose your pawn. This way I can defend it, you know? But you got to be careful there. Okay. Let's push this. I got to move quickly because I don't want to lose on time again. Putting my pawns on the dark square so that the bishop can't get them. Let's again... Uh, hmm. I'm going to relocate the knight here if I needed to defend. Actually, I can go to c6. That's a good, that's a good idea. Let's pre-move. We got, we got to move faster. We're too slow. We're too slow. I'm not losing another game on time. Nope. Nope. It's not going to happen. Question is, how do I get through? That's the big question. Can I even get through? Can I break through? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to get through. I'm just going to leave these pawns here. Let's push this one. Maybe the knight comes in here now. He wants to trade, that's fine. Okay, the knight comes in. He can trade if he wants. Yeah, what to do? What to do? don't actually know. Oh, I have an idea. Actually, I actually have an idea. Yeah, I have an idea. Okay. I think we got to do it. Oh, he's going to take me? Okay. This is good. Yeah, this is should be a win. Because now I have this pawn that he has to keep his king guarding the whole time. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, I didn't see that. No, I, I'm losing now. I'm losing. Yeah, well played by our opponent. I, I messed up the end game. Just totally messed that up. Yeah, well played. I I uh I'm sure we I'm sure we were winning that end game, I'm sure of it. Let's see. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure there had to be a win at some point there. Okay, so the opening was fine. Let me update the loss before I forget. Wait, what was the blunder? Oh, B5. Yeah, B5 was a poor choice. As we saw, there was a weakness there later. But even here, I felt like, okay, this should be better for us with the with the pawn. Okay, engine says it's a draw at this point, but hold on. Here, we were winning. Okay, this is where it was, and I must have messed it up. Let's see. B4 was the right move. Okay, okay. 
Knight to d4. So what did I do wrong? Oh, I didn't see the pawn was hanging. So obvious. So obvious. Yeah. It's the little things, guys. It's the little things that if you miss them, it comes back to bite you. Yep. Unbelievable. And again, if I would have played knight to c6, and then what? Back to d4. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Because there's both pawns hanging, and white can't defend them both at the same time. Wow. All right, so we missed that. Here. I, so normally, yeah, this is a weird position. Because normally, the person who has the pass pawn in a situation like this is always going to win. And the reason is, imagine if it was white's turn and they move like here. Right? Well, I bring my king in, white has to guard this, and then I'm able to come over here and just gobble up all the pawns. That's what I was thinking in my mind. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Even after some things happen over here. What I failed to realize is that this is what's called, um, I think this is called a mutual Zugzwang, where it's Zugzwang for whoever gets the last move. So, so for example, since white was able to play h5, okay, they put me in Zugzwang, where it's like, my position is good right now. I have no problems. But as soon as I move, then I'm in trouble because the king comes in and now I lose my pawn. But if you go back to this position, imagine if it was my turn, I could push my pawn, and guess what? Now white is the one who has to retreat. I come in, like I mentioned, and I take all the pawns, and I win. That's what I was thinking was going to happen. And it has to do with, this is a very interesting situation, where the pawns are perfectly set up to where I just don't have anywhere for my king to, to go. I only have one move. A lot of times you have multiple options and you can kind of bounce back and forth. In this case, I couldn't. I only had the one move, right? And it allows this amazing situation where I actually lose my pawn and then it's just over. White's the one who whose king is more active. My king is kind of stuck where I can't even defend, right? Uh, wow, that's amazing. It shows you how tricky these pawn endings can be. Yeah, and I didn't even think that would be a possibility. I didn't have to give up the knight like that, you know. Unfortunate. So how so what I think I started this did I start the stream at 2048? I'm pretty sure. Does anybody remember that? I'm pretty sure I started the stream at 2048. Probably can look at that. Let's see, October 5th. This was the first game that we won. Um, does it tell me what my rating was before the game or just after the game? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was 2048. And then we won this game and got up to 2055, if I'm not mistaken. It was? Yeah. That's so funny. How long was the stream? Let's see. Where's the, the time at? How long is the stream? Where, why can't I see that? Anyway, multiple hours. I don't know why I can't see that data somewhere on my thing over here. And I'm I'm literally at the exact same rating that I started at. <laughs> That's what tilt will do to you. Two and a half hours. Okay, thanks, guys. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yes, yes. Two and a half. Thanks. Second attempt tomorrow. Yes, I guess so. All right. Any questions, comments before I go? Questions, comments. At least I didn't lose. Yeah. Take it easy. Pamela, thank you. Chess Express, awesome. Thank you. Stayed the same, but you learned a lot. Cool. Good. Can't title these ahead of time. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should stop doing that. You do this a lot. <laughs> Jokes aside, what is my goat's name? <laughs> favorite soccer team? I don't really have a favorite soccer team. I used to play a lot, but I don't really watch it on TV anymore. 
Thanks, guys. Today's not my day, but tomorrow will be. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, oh, before I go. All right, guys, listen carefully. Just listen carefully. I'm going to post a video. I'm going to post it right now. And you guys need to go watch it, okay? This is an important video, so hold on. Let me copy the link here. I'm going to copy the link. I'm about to make this public, so you guys are going to be the first ones to watch it, okay? Here we go. Here we go. Public? I'm clicking publish right now. This is the video, okay? This is the video. Go ahead. I just did it. Halloween Gambit. You're going to enjoy it. Go check it out. You know, thumbs up. All the good stuff. Comment. Stay till the end. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. All right. Thanks, guys. Have fun with that one. Take it easy. Stay sharp. Play smart. Take care.